Well, I love it that I actually understood your language. You understood? Yeah, Good. thank you. <laughs> and Jakob, I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to say this with dry eyes, but thank you for the best documentary ever. I see it as, um, of course, it's the first such international documentary ever made. Congratulations on that. In addition, it's such uh, skillfully made and it also serves as big honor to the best soldiers against the information warfare, the Russian journalists, the brave ones who are actually risking their life when they are investigating this. Thank you for giving us this beautiful film. Right, so, hello everyone. Um, I will tell you now what you already saw the tip of the iceberg of in the great film. I will tell you what happened to me and I will tell you what I found out when in 2014 I started to specifically investigate the actual impact and the influence of the anonymous and aggressive propaganda trolls of Russia. At that time, it was a new phenomenon. It was nearby Finland. We also have Finnish speaking, uh, Russian speaking population in Finland, which in my view were in special danger zone. So I wanted to know, do people actually who, you know, surf around social media, do they actually identify a fake account even? Is this whole troll factory from the Finnish point of view just a joke that doesn't have any influence at all? So I decided to ask the Finnish internet users, the people who were targeted for information warfare. I published one article in which I very briefly described the activities, the then known activities of the Russian troll farm. And I asked very, you know, old fashioned way of receiving information by a journalist. I asked questions, where have you witnessed such activities and how have you reacted? if in any way. Please send me your answers and I will compile a story. So then, I was targeted for a very old-fashioned Soviet Union style field campaign. Basically a character assassination as they call it. I started to receive hateful messages and that's how I understood why propaganda, especially conveyed digitally, is not just some abstract threat to our democracies or our freedom of speech or citizens' right to receive factual information, but it's also an actual security threat. It was being used to mobilize people into hateful actions. In my case, the personal case, by using lies in these uh, so-called articles, you can actually call them just filth, I was claimed falsely, to work in cooperation with American Baltic Special Services and that I was a famous assistant of NATO and Estonian security police COPO and that I was gathering an illegal database of actual people who support Putin in Finland and thus creating racism and discrimination against Russians in Finland. And also it was said that I will send this name list to America as soon as I'm done gathering it. So I was framed a criminal and a foreign agent. And people who believed these stories wished for me to go to the jail, send me th threats, send me smears. Here where all this was uh, originally coming from, the very like three days after my publication, this is a really interesting um, institution called Russian Institute for Strategic Studies, based in Moscow, operates under Putin's administration. Its supervisors are Russian security service officers serving the Russian intelligence, such as SVR, the foreign intelligence, as well as the infamous FSB. They also pretend to be you know, some innocent, a proper research agency. But in fact, what they do is they gather information to back up Putin's regime's policies. And they are described by 
the best intelligence analysts in the West as the Russian special services propaganda wing and PR wing. And here, the guy who was presenting these fake news stories, he has um, connections with very high, um, not just in Moscow, but also in um, Syria. The Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad is his handshaking friend. And he has also been um, detained by the police in Moldova after he had been agitating pro-Kremlin protests on the streets. Here he is giving home assignments to Finnish students. He is teaching them how to stop news spreading by the Finnish proper news um, institutions using Russian ways of influence, the information psychological warfare. Luckily, uh, some students are so active that they take photos and put them to Twitter uh, for fake news campaign. Just remember from Kazakhstan and Ukraine and elsewhere. Here, what made me specifically worried, uh, this says Finnish fascism, and it shows the Finnish country flag, the national symbol, smeared with Nazi symbols, and some kind of Finnish-looking people. What I learned when this was being sent to me multiple times from different email addresses, I understood that such material already exists, or someone can really quickly produce such material. And why it was worrying? Because one of the most important tools of propaganda is demonization. And that happens with creating labels such as Nazis or fascists. And I had seen such material being spread about Ukraine already years before Russia actually started its physical and kinetic warfare against Ukraine. It was framing U Ukraine as a Nazi country led by fascists that need to be liberated. And that's why young Russian guys recruited in the army to be able to go and liberate the poor Ukrainians from the Nazi command. And they were actually frustrated when they didn't find any real Nazis or fascists when they enrolled in Ukraine in the end. Then someone set up a new trolling group. This again happened in a couple of days after my investigation went out originally. In this group called humorously Russian Troll Army, professional propagandists and fake profiles created an atmosphere in which they claimed it's okay to use your freedom of speech to, for example, make death wishes and death fantasies about me and make libelous claims, so false claims, and also stalk what I do on public sphere and mock everything I say and frame me as a liar. This group still exists and there are many similar groups in Finnish and in almost any language. And they all do similar stuff and um, in the meanwhile they also spread Russian propaganda. They also gathered 263 email addresses of my colleagues to whom they sent disinformation about me. To my colleagues they told that they actually invented a citation which I had never said, according to which I had wanted to destroy fr Finnish freedom of speech. And the thing with Russian information psychological warfare is that it targets to marginalize its targets not just in the society, but also in their professional community. In this case, at my own workplace. Here then, February 2015, while I was, still, I was also receiving really good hints and tips from the Finnish audience and internet users, um, and I was checking them, taking a lot of time to check all those good tips, but I also went with my colleague as the first fin um, Western film crew to the Troll Factory to see what, what is actually happening there. It's only 350 kilometers from uh, Helsinki, so we really need to see what's going on. And what we found was so astonishing. Um, it's so well described in Jakob's film that I don't have to go to the detail, but one thing that was exposed during our visit was that prior to our trip there were only rumors basically, that this is somehow connected to the Russian security services. But they, because they have the stupidest security guard the world has ever witnessed, he actually ended up confirming itself. 
So when we were filming and taking photos outside the troll factory, the guard came out. He was being so filmed and taped. And he told us that we need to leave. We need to stop and else he will call the police because can't we see that this is an administrative object, an administrative building in Russia? Administrative buildings only include places like police stations, nuclear power plants, army bases. So thanks for sharing that with us. We didn't know that yet. After we came back, some months, oh, of course there was just basic smearing all over F Facebook and Twitter and uh, elsewhere. But there was also a protest. And I really loved it how well it was shown in Jakob's um, documentary. Here in Finland we had this uh, Facebook event feature used to organize a physical protest. Again, outside the cybersphere in 2015. I believe it was April or May. And in this Facebook event, which no one knows who created, people were being invited to uh, basically attack wily journalists and also harass the journalists while they're going to work. And of course, in their narrative, in their story, the wily, the Finnish broadcasting company, which is quite, quite reliable and obeys the laws and the journalist ethical guidelines, these activists call Wiley the troll factory. And the actual troll factory we visited at St. Petersburg, that's the news agency. And they also accused us of propaganda spreading. And this even led to some security precautions we had to take because some journalists felt they were being threatened. So here the message you already saw actually. My f fake dead father appeared in my life. April 2015. So I gave this number to the police. You know, maybe they will find out who sent it. They didn't. It was secret. At this point I realized that, okay, this has no limits and anything can happen. And what really made me want to throw up was that my family was being brought into this. I mean, I was just trying to do my job. Please leave my family out of it. But it was too much to to ask. Here, um, finally, my investigations results. So I had actually originally planned to do only one story. But when these trolls and propagandists started their attack, and when I started to really browse the social media and I found what I found, which was a massive amount of troll infested materials and channels, I decided I will make a series of articles and that I will also make those articles in English and in Russian because there's an international need for such information, because seriously, this was not looked into at that time. And even some, um, some of my colleagues were looking at me funnily, like, are you some kind of conspiracy theorist, you know, looking at this topic? But yeah, so then I found out that the trolls had already had impact and influence. They had silenced and scared Finns not to voice out their opinions or information about Russia or the Kremlin. Anymore. Some Finns had even stopped social media after they had become targets of troll attacks. Some Finns told they didn't know anymore what is true and what is not true. For example, in the Ukrainian conflict of which and war, of which the trolls were spreading massive amounts of disinformation and different conspiracy theories, just as seen on Jakob's film. Also, the sad part was, in my opinion, the saddest impact was that some Finns started to spread the troll and propaganda material further in their own networks after they become subjected to it. Of course, there were also um, non-affected people, which was great news. Here then, who participates in the troll conversations? We have there Peter Saramo, high parliament official in the Finnish parliament, working with European Union legislation, uh, very important topics, working in the Grand Committee, of the Finnish parliament. He's all around uh, basically supporting professional propagandists and discussing with fake profiles and mostly discussing of how embarrassing to Finnish journalism I am for doing such, you know, stupid stories. Here, one source of trolling on social media, the Russian embassy 
in Helsinki. After my investigations, uh, they have uh, done really undiplomatic and, so to say, trolling operations in many other countries as well, such as the uh, London Embassy and other places. Here, uh, some screen caps of posting in which anonymous groups or anonymous site has been buying visibility from Facebook to promote their field content about me to even bigger audiences. And I found out about this when my friends were sending this to me and telling that, oh my God, look what's polluting my news feed. Then I listed in my investigation one specifically interesting um, site, a fake news site operating in Finnish, as a site that spreads Russian propaganda and that also hosts a massive amount of pro-Putin fake profiles. That site is called What the Fuck News. It's really uh, interesting, especially after what we've learned that has happened afterwards in America and other countries in which trolls organize this anti-immigrant and racist and pro-hate speech content. In Finland 2014, what the fuck site was known to only um, propagate uh, racist material, framing all immigrants and speci especially all refugees as rapists and terrorists and going really heavily after Muslims and trying to depict them as all as, you know, something to be afraid of, something to hate. Stories anonymous, mostly, or written with pseudonyms. So, this is how they then uh, revenged that I had listed them with ar good argumentation. Until today, what the fuck paper and its similar sister sites, there is a network of such sites, they have published well over 220 field pieces about me, framing me as mentally ill, liar, just like the Russian journalist told in the uh, documentary. Um, fake news journalist, um, brain da damaged, someone who invented trolls from her imaginations, um, also drug dealer and NATO lobbyist. And what they had done here actually was that they went through old court files and they found that I had received so, so long time ago, 300 euro fine because I did have a drug problem. And they made it into this. They also took photos of uh, some of my really private health data, including the times and places in which I had been into hospital or other rehab treatment for my then problem. Now it's all over online and I cannot never take it away. So then also they, like you heard, they contacted my employee, employer and really wanted to get rid of me. They also have published um, so nasty photo manipulations. And they always make an article whenever I do something publicly. So they just want to show that they're following me and that they spin everything around that I say or do. Here just, you know, some of the what the fuck paper articles, headlines, just to give you an idea. And you should see uh, the so-called public debate under the... Uh, comment under the articles, comment sections. Uh, it's, it was once powered by Facebook plugin in which any fake profile on Facebook or actual person on Facebook can write whatever. And it's quite nasty. Also physical following me uh, in Helsinki and hate filming and making f uh, filth memes. Here just international examples whenever I publish something this is how Russia strikes back. They want to show that they're following and that they really disapprove what you're doing and that you are explaining the Russian information warfare or Kremlin's uh, policies critically. Here are some of the memes and some of the uh, troll materials in visual form. This visual uh, imagery is especially luring and interesting to people who 
don't you know bother reading those stories, who prefer to consume, for example, videos or pictures. And they spread really well on social media, I've noticed. Here they also then made crime report against me and my chief editor. They accused us of stalking and secrecy crime. Actually crimes that they were themselves being suspected of. Here, this is not fake news, this is actual news. Uh, some uh, police here tells uh, that someone from inside Wiley, from inside my newsroom, a colleague, is suspected of providing information about my job assignments and my location. And to have provided that information to one of the crime suspected uh, people in this uh, criminal case. However, this went to the prosecutor and prosecutor uh, said that since it was only, you know, a, le a less, uh, a small kind of an act and because the guy said that he didn't know there is a campaign against me, uh, the prosecutor didn't prosecute. Here they also go after the police, the police who investigates them or the police who comments, for example, human rights issues. They also go after priests who are too, um, too polite towards refugees. And they also go uh, after officers of the Finnish army. They even stalk officers' opinions about whether Finland should become NATO member or not. And if an officer supports Finland's NATO membership, uh, he ends up in what the fuck paper to be smeared. Here how they also operate in cooperation with uh, extremists on the real world. Here the activists have started a protest camp in the heart of Helsinki, promoting a serial criminal and fake news um, a boss as the next president of Finland. And here, RIS, the agency that I told you about uh, in the beginning, I was so excited and interested when in 2017 Reuters, the news agency, found out after interviewing several different American security service uh, members that RIS was in fact the entity that was in charge of designing the whole trolling and fake news operation targeted against the US presidential election in 2016. So the American security services have proof that the RIS members, RIS workers, even circulated plans on how to attack and how to swing the votes for Trump in Russian Duma for acceptance. Here some of the news, not fake news, real news, to what operations the trolls have been participating in. But And here, uh, last but not least, these guys, the guy who works for RIS, and the guy who uh, owns and or owned and uh, founded What the Fuck Paper and its sister sites, they were last month convicted of smearing me and stalking me and um, spreading fake information about me. And they were convicted to quite harsh um, convictions. The other got one year um, conditional sentence in prison and the other got one year, 10 months unconditional prison. Obviously he had also committed some other smaller crimes, but the majority of that came from attacking me. And guess how the Russian media and the Russian troll factory presented all this? They presented that these guys are, have never done anything wrong. Instead, the Finnish justice system is completely corrupt and does, you know, fake judgments. The troll factory fake news site, Riafan, even stated that they wish these guys will get lesser sentences in the appeals court. And according to Russian uh, state news agency, I was named as the only stalker in Finland. But yeah, I will stop this here. Thank you so much.
Ja, og da, siden vi har både Jakob og Jessica her, så vil vi gjerne ha en samtale med dem to. Velkommen til scenen. I think you two have a lot to talk about. <laughs> and I have tried to prepare a few questions, but uh, I hope also the audience <coughs> have questions. And uh, it's uh, astonishing and shocking. And I'm uh, thinking, how do the Finnish uh, society, how do the Finnish people, how, how well informed are they and how do they protect themselves? Well, much thanks to, we have a very vivid free press, uh, very well-informed journalists, uh, really skilled Russia journalists who are uh, investigating and specializing so, uh, sorry. in yeah, Russia. Is the camera there? You sh we should move. Oh, yeah, I okay. think you should sit there. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Am I right? <laughs> so, and because of the... Finnish Russian uh, history. Mm -hmm. So Russia attacked us and started war against us. Many Finns already learned as children, you know, that something aggressive and bad m might come from Russia. So there's also great education system. But yeah, uh, there were many opinion leaders who started discussions of the troll operation, as well as a researcher with the uh, uh, Finnish Defence Forces in, back in 2014. So, yeah, people, especially now, are quite informed and we are being quoted as being uh, at the front lines uh, countering the Russian information warfare, so I guess we're quite good at it. And uh, the question goes to both of you. Uh, how, how can we ordinary people who uh, use social media, and we are on the internet. How can we protect ourselves and our society? It's complicated. It's, I mean, we had no idea that social media as a tool for, it was in the beginning, Connecting people, as Mark Zuckerberg always said, as a tool for democracy, as a tool for freedom of speech, would be taken by bad actors, by people who uh, had a completely different agenda. Uh, of course, uh, I mean, there's an issue. Uh, there's an issue. Of Do it. Uh, you, we can hope, and the next film is a bit about that as well. We can hope that uh, the social media is being seen to as not just a technological platform, a service thing. It is the world's largest public space, and like newspapers, it needs to be controlled. Is not the right word, but it needs to be. Uh, edited by editors. I think in the end we will, we cannot have a wildfire of uh, and the sewage like this, like this uh, without uh, going in and try to uh, edit it, try to control it like the newspaper has been done. Of course you can um, share and recommend Jakob's movie and tell everyone they should see it. But seriously, mm, I don't know how come Facebook can get away with all this so easily, as well as Twitter. They have already both of them former security leaders, former their you know, high bosses, saying that they really tried to alert the companies, but the companies didn't do anything. So basically these companies, just like Jakob said, they are enabling such state-sponsored propaganda and harassment activities. 
And I'm not sure myself whether I want to be part of that anymore. I have also tried to influence the Finnish legislation uh, so that our politicians would put these companies um, in higher responsibility over, you know, they are doing business with us, how come they also don't take the responsibility of their activity? They really should. And how we as citizens can then influence that. We can vote for better representatives and more efficient representatives to, who really protect us and look after our interests also on social media sphere in the next elections. And uh, your, um, your employer, Ile, they must have been uh, having a, uh, done a lot for you. You think they are, are a good employer that protects you the that, way you want or the needs? That's an interesting um, way of putting it. I absolutely love them and um, respect what they have done, but it's also their legal responsibility at least in Finland and in many other Nordic countries as well. It's the employer's responsibility to protect if something bad is happening to their worker because of work. You know, I didn't have any issues. I didn't, my life was just fine before I started to make investigations for Yle. So, but yeah, but not just Yle, uh, also other chief editors of the Finnish traditional media, they have been super. They have put out already two joint statements uh, to the publicity. First, it was like 20-something editors telling that they protect, it was after the drug scandal, that they protect their journalists who become targets of field campaigns. And then two years after, when other journalists also started to become targets, they actually were already over 80 chief editors who were already demanding our parliamentarians to change the legislation so that such campaigns cannot Continue. So it's difficult to be a freelancer, as you are, maybe. Um, I'm still alive. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I would like to add another thing on what, what I said before, uh, because uh, because the changes, the changing uh, terms in this whole business of social media is, uh, uh, I mean, to my opinion, it is pretty severe. I've been investigating the, uh, the conflict in uh, Myanmar with, uh, with the military and the Rohingyas uh, and uh, what has recently been put forward is that the military in Burma and Myanmar actually established a troll factory. It was not just emotion that uh, were boiling over uh, so to speak. It was well organized, it was designed, it was soldiers who had been hired to make, just like in Russia, fake profiles, to make fake sites uh, saying, let's get on with the genocide of the, these damn Rohingyas. Also, it's, it's very seriously uh, that this social media that we love suddenly becomes a tool for these kind of forces. and and. Uh, Facebook had been warned in 2014, they had been warned in 2000, because it has been a slow build-up. They were warned in 2015, in 2016, I mean in 2015 they had one employee who were able to speak Rohingya, no, sorry, uh, speaking uh, Burmese. And then after very much pressure, recently they have employed around uh, 50 to control 18 million Facebook profile from Myanmar. I mean, this is serious. This is, uh, it's like a wildfire. It's uh, something that is not uh, controllable anymore. And that uh, because it's new and we are saying, okay, what to do about it, what to do about it. It's, it's not that easy because we are touching uh, some very uh, core issues of the democracy, namely freedom of speech. Who is going to control it? And, but uh, it's hard to find answers right now, but somebody is going to control it. Whether it's Mark Zuckerberg, who is going to be the editor-in-chief of the world's largest public forum, or it, it is a governmental uh, initiative, but something has to happen, and I think something will happen in, 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 in the years to come.
Yeah, I would like to add to that that um, in my personal case, I have noticed and also identified as the worst possible outcome and result and the threat that I have my former friends now who also hate me, who also believe this stuff that is being spread about me uncontrollably on social media and who then approached to me and sent me death threats. Seriously, it's my old friends, they should know me. But in <coughs> blink of an eye, just like this when they uh, see fake news story about me, they digest everything as it says in the story written by some anonymous troll, hate speaking troll, and then you know lose all their ideas which they previously had about me. So, yeah, definitely, and what they have also um, done, just like in the documentary, also has been shown in Finland that um, these fake news site stories that then have been spread on Facebook with the help of Facebook, they have practically been agitating people to attack foreigners in Finland. And when the refugees started to come, the asylum seekers, uh, in big amounts in 2015, uh, people who were consuming this stuff, they actually went and greeted the refugees with a Molotov cocktails, for example. Uh, I was a bit curious about uh, Peter Saramo. I don't know if I understood uh, what you t uh, said about him, uh, Member of Parliament. What mm. was that? Yeah, so <laughs> these, um, sometimes these troll groups, so First, sometimes people say that disinformation does not influence us because we in Finland or we here in Norway, we are well educated. You know, we don't believe in lies. We don't believe in fakes. We can know what is true and what is not true. But then we find these well educated people who are in high responsible positions in the society participating and giving more authority and credibility to such basically fake profiles and professional propagandists who are the other people who are in the group, as well as far right and far left um, and anti-system activists. So yeah, just to make a note on that we are seeing also fake news spreading by some members of the academy in Finland, um, by the people you would not expect who you would expect as of officials to show an example on, you know, how to behave on social media. And this Mr. Buckman, I think I have uh, met him on the internet many times uh, really? for many years, but uh, uh, I think he is believed by some people. Uh, can you tell a little bit what kind of character is that? You uh, of course, yeah. So he is basically, he's also a former academic. He has just entered in three different universities in Finland, even though his um, doctor's dissertation was basically a fake. Uh, he has been super active in Russian media for over 10 years, uh, mostly spreading lies, uh, not just about Finland and Finnish human rights system, but also uh, against many other countries. So he has a following, he has wide international network of well, some of them have been detained by, for example, Polish police uh, for uh, cooperating with Russian security services and espionage. And his network also includes all kinds of other uh, interesting influencers. And yeah, he has built, for example, a community of pro Kremlin activists in Finland and they organize all kinds of activities together. So he's a, is he a personal friend of Putin? I haven't seen a selfie of him and Putin, so I wouldn't know. But he is working for a lieutenant colonel who is appointed by Putin. Questions? Please, in English, please, 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 if it comes to me. Uh, this was very, very interesting. Um, uh, is it so that uh, Finland, in some sense, is targeted 
uh, for this kind of information or disinformation campaigns. And uh, what is the situation in the Baltic states? Uh, because uh, it's kind of hard to relate. You can't, uh, you can't recognize these kind of stories in Norway or in Sweden or Denmark either, I think. But what you are reporting from Finland is very particular. And I would, uh, I would uh, suspect that maybe you would find something of the same in the Baltics. Oh, wow. Well, um, just about Beckman and Norway, for example. Beckman has staged protests outside um, the Norwegian embassy in Moscow, calling Norway a brave state. Uh, so, and also agitated Russian people to participate in the protest. And he has done other kinds of campaigns including uh, Scandinavian countries as well. Uh, he has also attacked, for example, a Swedish journalist. And um, yeah, so, but he's just one guy. Then there are multiple various disinformation operations targeted, not just in Finland, but against Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, um, Poland. Please follow if you are really interested in this. European Union um, has project, a really good one. Uh, once a week they publish a weekly report on different um, disinformation campaigns against member states. So you can find it from EU versus disinformation, from their Facebook, from their Twitter, and also they have a newsletter which you can order to your email. So you can check from there what's going on specifically. But this is ongoing. This is happening like all the time. Like I would like to find one factual piece uh, of reporting about any of these countries we're speaking here from the Russian state-controlled media. I would be so, so happy. Just a little supplement. Uh, I did some research into the Baltic states and, <clears throat> and they have a, uh, quite a, a big group called, uh, they call themselves elves, uh, alpha, uh, because these are the ones who combat trolls, uh, I mean, basically, what they're doing is uh, is what the Russian journalists are doing, and like uh, Jessica have done, uh, try to debunk uh, the f inflow of uh, of uh, fake news. So they are, uh, I mean, they, they are the Baltic states are in a special situation. They have a uh, many are afraid of a kind of uh, Ukraine scenario attempt of generating internal noise between the Russians in, 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 in these states and the, uh, and the others, uh, giving Putin an excuse to move in and protect the local Russians in these. Uh, so, I mean, they, they are they're much more at stake uh, for these uh, countries and, and, and they are much more aware of uh, keeping up with the fake news uh, about what's going on. I would, we're finished, sorry. I'd yes, like to yeah. point out a really interesting Norwegian um, case. Please follow um, two guys working in Kirkenes in northern Norway. In Norway, they became target of their journalists, and they follow the Arctic uh, area, and they became targets of heavyweight campaigns, not in the form of fake news, but in the form of uh, FSB officer running around meeting Norwegian. Um, officials and trying to have their paper, <coughs> which is published online, to be shut down. Also, the Russian um, ambassador, the Russian diplomat in Kirkenes attacked them viciously uh, and accused them of working for Norwegian government and presenting the same views as Norwegian government. And uh, after that, the chief editors, Thomas Nielsen's uh, entrance to Russia was forbidden. He was framed as national security threat to Russia. And what they do is super reports about the Arctic area. So there's one case for you. And also the Norwegian um, embassy of Russia in, in, uh, in Oslo, they seem to go after the media freedom very frequently. They publish almost every year some smears against the Norwegian press, claiming that the Norwegian press goes crazy and Russophobic and um, paranoid after the press publishes information how Russia tries to influence elections and how Russia has 
um, more and more intelligence operations, then they seem to regularly attack. So, and by the way, it's independent Barents Observer, the name of the paper. And yeah, 